Hello my YouTube fam, I'm Kiana. Welcome back to Kiana's Creative Closet. So today's video is going to be more of an informative video. We're going to talk about style theory and we're going to talk about how to put an outfit together to make it pop just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to style up some of these theories. Um, at the end of the video just to show you how it works. I'm also going to be popping up pictures so you know as I'm talking about some of these um, styles, patterns, textures and things like that so you can get kind of an idea of what I'm talking about. If this is something you're interested in seeing continue on watching but before you do that girl if you like style boo like I do Go ahead and subscribe down below. I promise you won't be disappointed. We do hauls, we do lookbooks, styling videos, as well as a little bit of lifestyle. So, all right, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe to your girl. Let's hop into it. Trend said I got style for you. Hey, see you at the top and spend a while for you. Big you up and they look down on you. Okay, y'all, so let's go over this real quick. It may get a little bit long because I'm thinking I'm going to put two outfits together to kind of show you what I'm talking about at the end of the video. I am going to be looking down probably a lot because um, I kind of prepared for this video because I did this video yesterday and when I went to edit this morning, it was blurry as heck. So let's get through it. So kind of, so I wrote notes, right? So Style 30 is basically a um, collaboration of shapes, lines, fabrics, or patterns. Um, they are components that define a style. Style 30 is basically personal, personal style, right? Personal style, that's what Style 30 is, is you, you know, having your own personal style but it's different things that that you need to take into consideration when you're trying to put outfits together to create your personal style so far as the patterns the textures the lines of an outfit all of that is going to kind of go into your personal style when you're putting the outfit together because it will take an outfit really fast from zero to a hundred now some people may get style theory and fashion theory mixed up. Fashion theory is basically um, a trend, something that's popular at the moment. That's a fashion trend. That is something for the masses. Style theory is basically personal style. That's all it is. It's just knowing what textures, what, what fabrics, what patterns, what lines, and all of that goes together to make an outfit not look so boring. That's what it is. Plain and simple, girls. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, so this video too is basically going to be talking about how to build a wardrobe and I'm going to go over that first. I would say if you don't have a personal style right now and you are a person who's trying to find a personal style, you're just trying to jump into fashion real quick. You know, you've been used to, you know, just grabbing pieces, just being, you know, kind of like a regular casual girl. Maybe just throwing on jeans, t-shirt and the sneakers or jeans, sweatshirt and the sneakers. Or you just kind of... um you know work with a lot you know you have a lot of work with you might not go out often and and now you want to kind of spread your wings girl spread your wings and go outside right <laughs> so um that's that's how i'm going to talk about you got to build your wardrobe first right you have to build your wardrobe um so yeah i feel like if you are trying to first find your personal style you're trying to revamp your wardrobe because I did have to revamp my wardrobe a few times. I had to revamp my wardrobe when I gained weight. Um, had to buy everything new. I had to revamp my wardrobe when um, when I lost weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I because I had gained a lot of weight when I was younger, much younger, and then I lost it. Right? So I revamped my wardrobe those times. And then when I, I worked in a place where I wore uniforms, y'all, for 14 years. Uniforms. So then when it was time to not wear uniforms and it was time to go on into work, I had to revamp my wardrobe for things that, you know, I could wear, wear to work. So I had to find my personal style over and over again. Now I'm revamping my style as I have gotten older to still have a functional wardrobe, but to be able to have fun with it too. So, of course, if you are revamping your wardrobe, revamping your style, start off with a capsule wardrobe. I'm a promise, I promise you, a capsule wardrobe is going to take you a long way, baby. 
start off slow and then add on as you go because everybody is not a capsule wardrobe type of girl some people like color and being a capsule wardrobe type of girl does not mean that you don't have color in your wardrobe you know some people do neutrals what i would say if you're just jumping into it start off with your neutrals and then add the colors that you like as you add on to your closet and your style starts to transform but I would say starting off, go ahead, yeah, start with those neutrals. So, um, yeah, and then add patterns and things like that. But if you start new, start off with neutrals, I would say you definitely need trousers. I would say get neutrals, start off with neutrals. I would get a pair of black trousers, and then I'll get another color that you like. It could be cream. You might like lighter colors. For me, I like lighter colors. It could be cream. You might like, um... You may like um, grays or you may like navies. I would do those two first. As you get a little bit longer, um, longer in your 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 space, I mean your 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 fashion girl box, then you can go ahead and add maybe some colors. So you may want to do a red. You may want to do um, a, a pretty bright, vibrant blue. You may want to do a mustard. You know do that but start off with your basic colors that can be mixed and matched with everything have you a good some good pair of jeans you can do whatever wash that you like um we're talking right now fall and winter so i would say do maybe a medium wash and a dark wash um start off with that and we want to basically talk about fall and winter girl because summer spring i don't care about that it's like I'm like I do care about summer and spring, but I'm not all in my fashion girl bag. I I just be cute. I be cute in spring and summer, and I be that girl in fall and winter. <laughs> um, girl, have confidence. I'm that girl. <laughs> have confidence. We gonna talk about that in the chit chat cocktail. Confidence. Um, but I would say do medium wash, dark wash. You know what? I will also say. Um, definitely do a black wash. A black wash to me looks so clean, so elevated, so classic. So I would say if you can do three pair, do those three. If not, you know, pick and choose which ones you want. You know, it's a different bunch of cuts of jeans nowadays. We have everything from um, skinny jeans. Which they say out, but girl, where would you want to wear? Where would you want to wear? I don't wear them no more because they not flattering on me. But where would you want to wear? So skinny jeans, straight leg, mom jeans, dad jeans. Um, now we have the whole banana like cut jeans, boot leg, wide leg, whatever you feel works best on your shape and knowing your shape. You have to know your shape, ladies. I have a video from last year that you can go check out if you're not sure about that. But whatever flattish. I'm sorry, y'all. I say like my phone get to ring every time I get to talking. But whatever fits, um, flat is your figure. Um, go for that. I'm more of a boot cut jean. Boot cut jeans look so marvelous on a pear shape or a curvy girl. Curvy girl, however, curvy girl. I go for boot cut, and then I like me a good straight leg jean. So whatever fits your fig, you know, flat is your figure the most. Get those, but you definitely need at least a couple pair of jeans, right? Now we talking we talking about capsule. We're talking about pieces that can make your um wardrobe well rounded, right? So I would say that. Now of course you want tops. Everybody knows. And if you don't know, girl, where you been? Where you been? Everybody needs them a classic white button down. Classic white button down. I would say get them in two lengths. I would say um whichever you like most though, you know, but I would say I would do a um, relaxed fit white crisp button down and I would do a white um, um, shirt dress, button down shirt dress. Now, if you're not into the longer kind of shirt dresses, you can do maybe a cropped, you know, whatever fits you the most. Or you can do maybe like um, a relaxed fit that's maybe, you know, regular length and then you may want to do an oversized one that's not considered a shirt dress but it's a little bit longer but you definitely need a white button down you also are going to need body suits 
you're definitely going to need body suits because we it's no longer the days we stuffing a whole bunch of fabric in our waistband no it's gonna make us look all rounded in the stomach area boo don't do that don't do that <laughs> get you a couple of body suits get them in neutral colors you can get them whether they're high neck mock neck um v-neck girl racer back whatever style you want but get you a couple a couple of body suits listen to me girls i know what i'm talking about <laughs> i'm playing y'all uh, we'll get you a couple of body suits tank tops too these are pieces that are good for layering so tank tops even though it's fall and winter it has no sleeves girls um, it's still going to be good because you're definitely going to layer something over it. Maybe a cardigan, a blazer, um, a flannel shirt, child, whatever you feel, you know, whatever style, whatever is your personal style, right? So I could say with tank tops, like I have on something low cut today. I like that. I, I get hot real fast. Or you can go some, for something higher than that. The same how you would do for the body suits. Go for which style you want, but definitely get a few tank tops. Also in neutral colors. I would say when I say neutral colors, I'm talking about creams, beiges, blacks, grays, blues. Um, it's fall and winter, so maybe a dark Bordeaux or Mer Merlot type of color. Maybe a hunter green. That's what I'm talking about with neutrals. I'm not just saying all blacks, grays, and whites. I'm saying a little bit of color, but we're not jumping into those bold colors just yet. We're going to add them as our wardrobe what revolves, okay? Um, definitely a turtleneck. Um, if you don't like, you can get a turtleneck in kind of a rib material. You can get it in a sweater material. But I would say basically a ribbed or cotton blend turtleneck. I don't like turtlenecks. So I do mock necks. They the same thing, girl. The mock necks is just for my girl with these little necks. These short necks. These girls who don't have no necks. We need mock necks. <laughs> the girls who have a little bit of length. They can do turtlenecks, right? So I would say that neutral colors again. Oh, everything is going into neutral colors, girl. Um, and definitely um, a sweater. I don't like sweaters. Again, I get hot really fast. But I would say you still need a sweater. I got a drawer full. Even though I don't like them, I have a drawer full. Because they are needed. Because what? In the winter time, it's what? Cold. It's cold, girl. Don't catch cold in your ass. <laughs> Why would I do these videos? I get so silly nowadays. I don't know. Coats. You need you a coat. Unless you live somewhere where it's very warm. And when you do live in those places like Florida, Georgia, things like that, you still need something a little bit heavier. So if you're not a coat girl, get you a nice jacket. Something mid-weight whiz though. You can, you'll still be warm. And you can still look like you're participating in fall. Even though y'all may not get full fall weather. Um, but if you are in areas where you get cold, definitely get you a coat. I would say a classic. Always stay with a classic. These trendy coats, they are going to come and go. Coats cost too much darn money to be buying a coat, a new coat every year. No. I got a ton of coats, and they are all classics. I, I got some, some ones that are kind of boom out there because my closet is full. <laughs> you know, I have... Evolve, right? <laughs> I said revolved at first. Look at that. Evolve, right? And so um I would say classic. I would go for like a trench style. Um trench styles does not have to be cat and you can do wool blends, you can do leather, whatever you know you like. I would start with a wool blend. Um if you want something a little bit more boom out there fascinating. Um, nice to the eye you can go with a leather um, and if you don't like the trench coat styles you can definitely do like the overcoat styles um, so what, whatever you feel with that I will start with again with neutrals but then I would say do something fun so you'll do that fun with either the the um, the texture which will be maybe leather maybe patent or you'll do it with maybe a pattern like I had a hound tooth coat that I just got rid of at the end of last um fall last winter but house tooth that's a really nice pattern to start off with that's going to go with everything now don't go out and get something like what i have i have a whole cow print trench coat and that i just picked up what a few months ago if you are starting off you don't want to start there you want to start with your your basic colors 
patterns first and I feel like houndstooth is a good one to go to if you do want something more catchy to the eye now with jewelry I would start off with daintier jewelry um, because daintier jewelries can be layered to make it look more of a statement um, necklace so I want to start off with like boom basic big statement um, jewelry you can always layer layer those things so if you start off with daintier pieces you can kind of dress those up or dress them down make them what you want to if you want it to look a little bit more bolder um, layer those necklaces I would say start off with smaller earrings but if you are a girl who love bigger earrings you can do that as well but maybe start off with like a hoop regardless of what um you know what size you like start off with maybe like a hoop a stud something like that right so when you go on to your bolder looks slowly and gradually add those pieces to your closet so you're going to slowly add color and you're going to i mean brighter colors instead of like the the bordeaux and and the hunter greens when you want to go a little bolder in color slowly do that start off with the colors that you really love your favorite color you know and don't say your favorite color is just black i know everybody say my favorite color black it got to be another color in the color real that you like that's not a color like black and white right so go with your favorites and do it in the same silhouette that i just talked about trousers um the same type of tops you know with the body suits things like that right and then skirts i forgot about skirts so definitely with skirts and dresses you want to go with the length that's most flattering on you i prefer maxi i mean yeah maxi and midi lengths if you are a um a girl who likes mini go for your mini i'm gonna say it again and i always say it in my videos girl i am jealous of these apple shades and introverted triangles their legs girl the legs are gorgeous Girl, y'all can wear, y'all should always wear mini skirts. Always show your legs, girl, because your legs are just beautiful. I'm jealous. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you're a mini skirt type of girl, go for your mini skirt. Now, I will say, you need satin, leather, and, um, some type of cotton, you know? I will say, don't jump into, um the jean just right away jean is a classic jean is going to always be a classic whether they made it a trend this year or not jean is a classic but i would say go with those textures first right before you jump out there right those what you want to start off with y'all because when i tell you it's going to round out your closet and just get it in the lengths that you feel you know fits you well get it in that left and then you know slowly add your colors slowly add your patterns the last thing you want to do is not know um how to the the style theory and how to mix patterns and things like that we're going to talk about that and girl you walk out the door looking like homie the clown don't play around <laughs> you don't you don't want that right so you want to slowly add patterns and we're going to talk about how these pattern things are going to work with outfits yeah, and then you can add bigger, chunkier necklaces as you go. But girl, start off with that capsule. Start off with that capsule wardrobe. So no matter which style you lean towards, whether you are a capsule wardrobe girl trying to go into, trying to add more to your closet, whatever style you lean um, to, you have to kind of know the style theory. So that's, we about to get into style theory. And style theory, again, it's your personal style, but it's adding textures patterns lines to make that outfit pop right it's gonna make the outfit pop so as far as textures i mean you have you know you might have patent or leather or faux leather wool um fur silk cotton all of these are fabrics right so again i told you to get different styles when i when it came to skirts i meant to say skirts and dresses but yeah textures right and that has to do rather is bottoms or tops dresses or skirts that is your textures now for the patterns you have things like snake skin or animal prints you have smaller patterns and larger patterns right so when it comes to patterns i would say if you are new to this and you don't want to look like homie, 
Start with tonal colors. Start with tonal colors, y'all. Start with tonal colors because I'm telling you, I have. I, that's how I don't really deal with patterns because you know how sometimes you can think, girl, you doing it, girl, that look good, girl. I'm about to shut the show down. And you be looking a fool, right? Because you got all these damn colors. You didn't look at somebody else's video or saw somebody on the street and you think you can rock it. And patterns, patterns is not for everybody, right? I feel like me as a heavier plus size woman, I feel like I can only do a pattern if it's up top. I'm a curvy woman. I'm, and I meant to say pear-shaped woman. I'm heavier down the bottom. A pattern at the bottom that's really busy is going to make me look larger than what I am for one and then mixing it at the top and the bottom mm -mm. Mm -mm. no it's not for me and I have seen larger women pull it off I just can't do it I can't do it but I will say start with tonal um tonal colors I will also say if you're going to do um, like patterns at the top and about and like I said to hold on before I jump into that if you are a girl like I said I'm a girl who can do pattern at the top so that doesn't mean that I don't wear pattern I just normally put us anything that's pattern on the top right and then I keep my bottom dark and simple um, you can do that and then another thing is if you are going for pattern top and bottom play around with the sizing in the patterns so say if you have like big patterns on top you know and then you can have a smaller pattern on the bottom so say if I had like a floor pattern on my top but I still wanted to do floor at the bottom make sure that you know or vice versa just make sure that they are kind of like different sizes sizing that will make it a little bit more or less Mm, you know mm. and then I also will say if you are heavier at the bottom just like I said um, kind of stay away from larger patterns on the bottom if you are secure you know um, you don't have a problem or you're not insecure with wearing pattern try to go for the smaller patterns at the bottom if you are going to wear them right if you're going to do that Start with the p smaller patterns on the bottom, and I would say in darker tonal colors. Um, even if you have like checkers, say if you had on a checkered top and then checkered bottoms, I would do something larger checkered at the top, smaller checkered at the bottom, and checkered together in different sizes is very pretty. Um, florals together in different sizes as mixing and matching different colors, but still in that kind of family tone colors it'll be pretty okay so yeah we talking about shapes okay so now we're finally putting the outfit together right we're finally putting the outfit together we're finally making it work so I would say with shapes like I always tell people if you're going for something a little bit more voluminous at the bottom go for something a little bit um, fitted at the top and this has nothing to do with rather being sexy or overly sexy because I hear a lot of people say that you should do this like if you had your legs out cover at the top because you don't want to look like street walker you know what I mean <laughs> lady of the night and that to me that has nothing to do with that I say this because it is balanced it is balanced when putting the outfit together right so I would say if you're doing something voluminous the outfit just looks better if you're going to have something a little bit slimming at the top and I know we in the days of everybody want everything oversized but I'm telling you it looks more it looks better it better it looks more flattering right or vice versa like me I, I don't I can't do anything voluminous at the bottom so I'm gonna do something more slimline at the bottom and more voluminous at the top did I just switch that around I hope I didn't but you see what I'm going for that again plays with your body shape you know so whatever fits you the most right so if I'm going for something that's like a pencil skirt and it's a little bit more slimming, I may do a blouse that's um, a relaxed fit, not oversized, but a little bit more, you know, a little bit more volume at the top. Or I may want to do a nice knit sweater, chunky sweater. Just playing with the shapes can make an outfit and the textures, right? So say if I put on 
a, a, a pencil skirt and a denim, maybe a wash denim, right? And then I throw on maybe a chunky sweater, knitwear, and kind of do like a half tuck. That's giving me texture right there. Am I right? That's giving me texture. And then that's giving me texture and it's giving me shape, right? Because the sweater, most sweaters are a little bit either relaxed or a little bit oversized. We ain't going for a fitted sweater most days, right? And the pencil skirt is just the shape of it is slimming. A pencil skirt is always slimming. So that's again what I'm talking about about shape. Or say if you have on a um, a pleated A-line skirt and you have on maybe a blouse or a bodysuit shape. So just adding dimension to an outfit is always going to work. Like I love to do a satin. Um, I love to do a satin piece. I last year satin and leather. Last year I wore a, a satin pleated skirt and I did a black bustier with a black pump. It was so cute. The pump was suede. The bustier was leather. The skirt was like a satin pleated. And then I did a cotton, polyester blend cotton blazer over top. It was so cute. That that is how you do a style theory. You're mixing textures, patterns. Um, just to make the outfit look interesting. I say been saying in a lot of my videos, adding texture to an outfit, adding different shapes to an outfit is what makes it pop. Whether it's your personal style or not. You need these things to make the outfit work. If not, it's gonna look blah. You know? It's definitely gonna look blah. And that again too, that I talk basically about shapes and limbs, you know, because with the limbs, you know, you definitely want to play with different limbs. You you may want to do a um, maxi coat with maybe a, a midi skirt or a, a midi dress or mini skirt, mini dress. That's already adding different limbs, right? And then with that, if you are a girl who have extremely long legs and you can do a booty, you might do a booty and that's another limb, you know, or you may want to do a knee high boot, that's another limb. Adding shapes and limbs is what definitely going to take that outfit up to. You just got to figure out what girl you are. So far as lines, you definitely, another thing with creating an outfit, right? Different lines, I would say work on the lines that fit you most. I know that I like things that are plunging. So I know I like either a kind of like boat neck. Is this a boat neck? I think so. Boat neck, V-necks. Um, I love one shoulder um, pieces. And it, it it's the, the outside lines first. The outside lines. So I like um, blazers that are slim fitted. Slim fitting, right? So it's coming in and giving you a little silhouette at the waist area. So you have to make sure it's things like that are complementing the pieces that really flatter you and that you want to show off. So I like something that comes in that is a little bit waist hugging. Um, and I like a jean that kind of skims my hips, skims my butt, and then come out wider at the bottom. That's why I like boot cuts because it um, kind of it kind of balances me because I have wide hips. Um, curvier girls have wider hips. So going for a skinny leg or something that's very skinny at the ankle, a taper leg, is doesn't look that flattering. Having something that comes out rather at the bottom, it gives us a balancing shape. And then, you know, those lines is what's going to make movement. So just like I said, imagine... Um, having okay, let's take this for instance. Like I used to like boxy, co um, boxy blazers and things like that when I was smaller. When I was much smaller than what I am now. So even with those boxy blazers, I knew that boxy is not that flattering on me, but I did like them. So for me, adding different lines and different shapes made it work. So having on that boxy blazer and maybe putting on an A-line skirt. Or a um, a a line skirt, or a um, what is that? The skirts to kind of fluff out, um, like full skirt. One of those full type of skirts was going to give it moving. So even though it's boxy, those blazers were boxy, and it might hit me at a um, length that was unflattering. That was would have been the hip. That a line skirt. Imagine that 
A-line skirt coming out from beneath it and giving that shape. And then the lines on it, the A-lines is going like this. It's automatically giving something that would have been stiff, something boxy that's just sitting on me. Square and sitting on me is now giving me shape. So when I move, when I walk, it's going to be movement within that. Now, if I would have had that boxy blazer on with a pencil skirt, the lines are just straight. It's doing nothing for me. I'm just having straight lines, y'all. It's no movement in that you know no movement and then with a pencil skirt being so boxy and a blazer being so boxy it's just a straight line it's just not working no movement whatsoever even though it is different lengths so imagine that boxy blazer with a skirt but still me I still wouldn't do that because you definitely want to know the lines that are flattering on you so now that I know what's flattering on me I will still do kind of like an hourglass blazer and then add that pleated midi length or maxi length skirt with that blazer that way I can have it closed button and closed or open and it's still going to give movement and yeah, it's just what was flattering for you. You might want to um, emphasize your waist or your hips. Um, you want to, to, you know, show your neckline. You might want to wear something that looks like it's giving you more length. For my short girls, um, I know a lot of my short girls wear heels. They like to wear... Um, um, what are those pumps to elongate their legs? They like to wear pointed toe, um, sharp pointed toe shoes that elongate their, their legs. So for your height, etc. Um, you just have to find clean lines like a, a pointed toe shoe. That's that's a line. Um, an hourglass blazer. That's a line. Showing off your neck. Something that's off the shoulder. That's a line. Something that's asymmetric. That's a line. All of these things are lines, lady ladies and it, it works so blending all of these your lines your textures your lengths your shapes that what is how you create your personal style and it, it don't have to be castle wardrobe i just talked about castle wardrobe if you are beginning and starting this it can be however whether you are a maximalist a minimalist a bold dresser you like color you don't like color all of these patterns textures shapes all of this is what's going to make the outfit it is so let me show you two outfits i'm going out this weekend um i'm going to a party so i'm going to show you like a hot girl <laughs> i'm gonna show you what i'm wearing because it's gonna be a hot girl hot girl moment okay y'all so now we're talking about the outfit um part of things so i already had i'm gonna show you two outfits I already had these outfits kind of style already they were on my rack because i'm going out this weekend i'm going out tonight to a family member's birthday party is going to be a live band and girl and when i say and a dj and when i say live band girl if you're in the dmv area you already know it's a go-go band when we say live band <laughs> bands in the dmv dc pg county area it means go-go band it's not a jazz band y'all if it was a jazz type of event i probably would have dressed a little bit um differently um, this is my take on sexy. I'm not an overly sexy dresser. Um, I like to show a little bit of the time, you know, maybe a little cleavage out, maybe a little bit of leg out. That's my sexy, right? And then I'm going to brunch tomorrow with my good, good girlfriend. Um, so I'm going to show you that outfit too. Both of them were styled up. But I wanted to kind of show you what I meant when I was talking about how shapes, limbs, um, and textures can really bring an outfit together so let's talk about it so first off like with the textures we have a few different textures going on and I'm going to add more to this outfit so I'm going to build on top of this so we have a nice cat and button-down shirt um, I prefer my lips again like I told you kind of like an oversized shorter length and then a shirt dress that's just me so I have on this cotton shirt dress and then I have on denim underneath. This is just a denim cut off like shorts that I got from Old Navy during last summer. Um, and then I have on a pair of patent leather boots. So you see all of the textures are coming together, right? Three different textures. And then I'm going to throw another texture on <laughs> over top of this in a minute. But you see as far as lengths, we have different lengths. 
the shirt dresses on we have the shorts that are shorter you know so we're already layering in limps and then we have the thigh high boot so we have our limps going on right and then let's talk about shape so this shirt dress even though it's kind of like an oversized shirt dress you see how it still kind of comes in at the waist it has a little bit of dadding in this area so it comes in so it's slimming so even though it's oversized it's still giving me a little bit of shape right and then also with the shirt being kind of oversized especially at the bottom i did something a little bit more fitted underneath that which is the denim short so of course i didn't want to go for anything baggy um i didn't want to go for anything that um that was going to add more volume so this is more slimming now the shorts are not skin tight but they are slimming and then the thigh high boot is just of course it's a little slouchy but it's still fitting and hugging the leg right so that's what i mean when i'm talking about my textures and my shape again i told you when i was explaining the shapes i like to show my waist now i could really emphasize that a little bit more because it's showing a little bit it's coming in a little bit but not much i could go with a belt right but i don't want to do a belt but if i did want to emphasize um that shape of my waist because so, we're emphasizing I, emphasizing <laughs> the um places on our body that we love you see how so i could do that with a belt you see how i left a little bit of this shirt open because i like to show my neckline my neckline so i'm bringing the attention up because i'm pear shaped so i always leave my shirts um, but in just a little bit so we're about to add to that i'm going to put on a jacket because it is chilly tonight and also when i do wear this out tonight i definitely will have on a pair of black sheer sheer stockings or um i don't do black i'm sorry like a um skin colored um my complexion coffee like i think i don't think i, girl, I don't know what it is <laughs> but i'll have on some stockings but also it's going to be cold i don't want to wear a coat right not in a club it's gonna be too hot um you definitely want to take all of that off when you get in there so i don't want to lug around a coat at the club so i'm going to put on this jacket give me a sec so i threw on this jacket my loves and you see the jacket is also giving me some shape you see how it's kind of coming in at the waistline and that is because i went ahead and i tied this belt of the jacket in the back i know the belt the um belt buckle is probably not centered but i'll fix that before i go out so being as though this is kind of like an oversized jacket um when you tie it tight enough in the back it will give you kind of like a puckering at the sides what gives it almost like a peplum style shape so that's what i mean so um the lady who commented you know was saying that my jacket's too small and things like that it's not, you know, if you see a little bit puckering, you see how it looks like it can't close, but that's a dead giveaway that the jacket is kind of oversized because you will get this kind of puckering here. I like that puckering because it's adding shape because this jacket hits me at a weird length, the length that wear would cut me off and make my hips look even wider than what they were. So with adding shape here and adding a little bit of puckering, of course it's still making me look a little wide, a little wider here, but it's still bringing me in at the um, place that you know this more flattering on me. And then it's still limps. We still have our limps. This is shorter than the shirt. The shirt is longer. The shorts are shorter than the jacket, and then we have the boots that are longer, longer. So it's still giving me um shape lines i'm sorry it's still giving me those lines lines shapes you know what i mean so love that and then i'm putting an extra texture on because the boots are patent leather but the jacket is actually a leather the jacket is actually leather so there we have it different textures you see how it could have been so boring if i just had or maybe this shirt, the jean shorts, and even if I had like a denim boot, that still could have lain boring because even though we had two different textures with the cotton and the jean, it still could have looked boring. So to add a little bit more fun to this outfit, to make it pop a little bit, we have a whole bunch of different textures going on. So that's what I mean about textures. We're gonna add one more thing. 
we're going to add this bag, this nice bag. You see the bag is sequence. It has sequence, but then the back is patent leather as well. So I love this because the sequence, this is the front of the bag, this is the back of the bag. But I could flip this around and have the patent leather side, right? But I'm going to keep it on the sequence side because it's still giving me yet another layer of texture. And I think it just works. Let me check. Yeah, she cute. She cute, girl. She's cute. The boots are really comfortable. I feel like I'm, I look real cute tonight. I'm going to look really cute. I feel like it works. It definitely works for me. Again, if you're not a shorts type of girl, if you don't like wearing um, short shorts, you could do this with like some leather leggings if that's your thing. I would do that. I wouldn't do patent leather leggings, but like a matte color leather, that would be cute. But this is the look that I'm going for. Tell me what you think about this. Okay, y'all. So, this is the next look. So, this is the look plain, not styled up. Nothing's tucked, anything like that. So, I told you I'm going to brunch. I'm going to just a laid back casual lunch this time. DMV area has all sorts of brunches. I don't feel like the party scene tomorrow. I just feel like going to get something good to eat, right? <laughs> so, I want to be casual, but I want to have on a heel just to make it still look like you know i put effort into the outfit so you already see right i have on a pair of straight leg jeans so i said always go for the jean that's most flattering on you i did it in a dark wash right so the jeans look really well with the boots you can also do a boot cut jean a boot cut jean would have looked very nice with this um with the boots as well right so i have that going on now the sweater far as the lines I have a v-neck v-necks is was more flattering on me I know it may be a little cool tomorrow but I'm okay with that with still having my chest out so I went for a v-neck because I feel like this is the type of line that looks well on me so the bottom cut this line does not flatter me this line hits me right where I'm widest it hits me right at the hip this is where I'm widest so I definitely don't want to do that. It's cutting me off and making me look extra wide here in the hip area. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to lift it and I'm going to tuck it. You see how I just did a tuck, right? So adding that tuck already elevated this outfit just a little bit more. For one, it's, adding a tuck can be a little bit, you know, more dressed up. Um, you know, just makes the outfit look a little bit more jazzed up when you have something at a weird length. And then it, it's not cutting me off in that area right now. So being as though I tuck it, tucked it, it lifted it from the hip area. Not by much, but by enough so it won't look disproportionate, right? So that's what I'm going for. Yeah, let me show you the extra layering piece that I'm going to wear. Of course, it is cold right now in the DMV area, so I can't go out just like this. I'm going to put on a trench coat. So I'm going to throw on this trench coat because I want to make the outfit look a little bit more interesting. You know, a sweater and just a pair of jeans can be kind of boring. So I'm going to make the statement with my jacket. So you see... You see how it's coming together? You know, you can scrunch the sleeves so you can see a little bit of the sweater. Just your choice. So, I'm going to show you the jeans that I was going to wear and why it wouldn't work for me. And as you see also, I have the belt tied in the back. I have it tied in the back, again, just to give me a little bit more shape in the waist area because trench coats are oversized and that will kind of um, really look a little bit too voluminous for my already voluminous body girl <laughs> so I've tied it at the waist right so so y'all I was going to wear these jeans I love these jeans I got them from nasty girl about two years ago the reason why I didn't put this this um, these jeans with this outfit is because of the line at the bottom you see how it has that um it's a two-tone jean but the two-tone piece is at the bottom and it's a uh, um, line going straight across so that line would have hit me right where the um 
where the trench coat end, right? So it would have looked a little weird. And I did try it on together, hoping that the line would have been longer, would have hit me at a longer length than the trench. But being as though those two lines are right there together, cutting it off, cutting off at the same um at the same um height, it would have looked weird. That's why I went for these, right? But you see, with the trench coat and these jeans, is nothing cutting it off. The lengths flow perfectly together. So, of course, you know, the, the jeans are longer than the trench, even though this is a maxi length trench, the jeans are long. So, I'm giving different lengths in the top, in the jeans, as well as in the jacket. That's what makes it work. Now, this also has different fabrics. So, of course, this is, um, the jacket is a cotton. Um, then you have your sweater, which is knitwear, uh, maybe like a wool blend, and then you have jean. Um, so we're not going extra with the fabrics, but you know, we still did a little something something with the fabrics. And then I added a pattern. Now I will say, I told you in the talk through version, if you want to do a trench coat this your first time around, don't go for some of this bow right off the bat. Do your regular colors, your creams, your tans. Um, even black if you're a black girl. So um, I think the outfit works. I think it's a cool brunch look. I feel like my personal um, style is shining through, and I feel like I went ahead and played with the textures, the shapes, and the um, and the lengths. So I'm just going to throw on just a brown bag. I don't know which is dropped, but I'm just going to throw on this brown clutch. It's not really a clutch. It has a handle to it, but I always carry carry this as a clutch. And then I'm going to throw on a pair of shades. I'm going to throw on these shades because that's what's closest to me. And this completes my outfit. Not sure if I'm going to wear these shades tomorrow. I might do something a little bit with a clear frame. Probably the ones, the Bottega dupes from Amazon. But this is the look. And I think she works. So I took a regular boring outfit and jazzed it up just a little bit. All right, my loves, that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you took something from the information that I gave you today. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.